Lesson 7.5, solving triangles using inverse trigonometric ratios. Inverse is the key idea in this lesson. All right, so inverse trigonometric ratios. Let angle A be an acute angle because when we're working with trig ratios, we're only working with the acute angles of the triangle. Here's the other acute angle. We're just focusing on A for this explanation here. All right, so inverse sine. What is inverse sine about? So if sine of A equals BC over AB, well, BC is opposite. AB is the hypotenuse. All right, so say you have BC and you also have AB, but you don't know what A is. So before, you would just be stuck in this situation. Now we have a tool to get us out of this situation and isolate this angle measurement, all right? And that's through the use of inverse trig ratios. So what you would do to this equation is you would take the inverse sine of both sides, okay? And when I do that, you could essentially think of it like this. It cancels out the normal sign. So on the right side, I'm left with the inverse sine of BC over AB. And then I have the measurement of angle A isolated. And the same thing applies for cosine and tangent. It's no different. All right, so let's do some concrete examples right now to see how this works out. All right, here we go. All right, so for example one, before we get into really working with the inverse trig ratio, let's just understand how to work out these simple problems and isolate the angle measurement. All right, so if I want to get rid of sine here, what do you do? You take the inverse sine of both sides. All righty. So once again, essentially, you could think of it as if this cancels out, and you're left with the measurement of angle B is equal to. Now you plug this in on your calculator. And we're going to round our answer to the nearest tenth of a degree. All right, we get 33.4 degrees. All right, let's do the same thing with the next one. I don't have that much space here. I'm going to do it below. So I'm going to take the inverse cosine of both sides. Zero point eight seven. All right, now I've isolated angle C, and I get 29.5 degrees. Done with that. All right, for the next one, I have inverse tangent of both sides. Inverse tangent of 3.29. All right, so now I've isolated the measurement for angle A, and I get. All right, and make sure you're doing this on the calculator yourself to make sure that you know how to utilize the inverse trig ratio. I get 73.1 degrees. All right. So now you should understand how to use the calculator to solve these types of problems. Let's do some more examples now. All right, to solve a right triangle means to find all the unknown side lengths and angle measures. All right, so for example two, it says solve the right triangle, round decimal answers to nearest tenth. Okay, so let's see here. I, I want to figure out the hypotenuse. That's the only side that's missing. Uh, you could use the Pythagorean theorem, or you could also recognize this. This is 3 times 3. This is 3 times 4. So what can we utilize here? We can use the Pythagorean triple. So I have 3 times 5, which is 15. So AB is equal to 15. Got that. All right, now to figure out the angle measures, I want to figure out A. All right, you have to use your trig ratio now. 
and you can use any trig ratio that you like because we know all of the side lengths for this triangle. So you choose. I'm going to use sine. So sine of A is equal to opposite, which is 9, over hypotenuse, which is 15. Now, how do you isolate the angle measurement? How do we get this by itself? Because it's attached to the sine, right? They're together. How do you get rid of that sine next to the A? We take inverse sine of both sides. And another way to think of this is that the inverse detaches the sine from the A. Okay, so A is by itself now. So the measurement of angle A is equal to what? It's equal to 36.9 degrees. All right, we're going to figure out the other angle measurement. Got to figure out B. All right, you have to be careful here, though. I'm going to use sine once again. Oops. All right, I'm going to use sine of B. And in this case, what's opposite to B? It's not 9, it's 12. All right, watch out for that over the hypotenuse. All right, now to get B by itself, I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. All right. And then now I get B by itself. All right, that's the whole purpose to inverse trig ratios. It's to get the angle measurement by itself so you could find the angle measurement. And I get 53.1 degrees. All right. That's all there is to that. Let's do some more examples to really make sure you've established a complete understanding of the concept. So here we go. Next problem. All right. Here I have two, three. I'm going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem here. There's no 2, 3, 4 triple. Don't make that mistake. So 4 plus 9 equals AB squared. 13 equals AB squared. Square root both sides. AB is equal to the square root of 13. All right. I have all the side lengths now. And you can choose any trig ratio that you like to figure out the missing angle measures. Now, I could have saved figuring out this length for the very end, and that would have confined you to only using these two side lengths when applying your trig ratio. So we would have to use adjacent and opposite only. We can never use hypotenuse. So cosine would be out of the question, sine would be out of the question, and we would only be able to use tangent. But since I already figured out the hypotenuse, now I could use any trig ratio that I want. Okay. So, let's figure out A. All right, so I have some, let me use a different trig ratio now. I have cosine of A is equal to adjacent, which is 2, over hypotenuse, which is the square root of 13. All right, so now to get A by itself, I have to take the inverse cosine of both sides. I have 2 over the square root of 13, and I have measurement of angle A is equal to 56.3 degrees. Done with that. All right, now to figure out B, I'll use tangent for this one. So tangent of B is equal to, what's opposite to B? 2, and what's adjacent to B? Three. Okay, so now I take the inverse tangent of both sides. And I get 33.7. 
because I'm rounding to the nearest tenth. Okay, that's all there is to that. We found all the missing side lengths and angle measurements, so we have solved the right triangle. And there's one last example here. All right, here they give you one of the acute angles, and they give you the hypotenuse. So this is essentially going back to a, one of the previous lessons where you first learned about trig ratios. So I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between using regular trig ratios and using inverse trig ratios. All right, so here I have the hypotenuse. I need to find the opposite, and I need to find the adjacent. All right, so I'm going to use sine. So sine of 25 degrees is equal to opposite, which is gj over the hypotenuse, which is 13. So multiply by 13 on both sides, and you get gj, which is equal to 5.5. All right, we got that. Let's figure out... Let me write that down here. This is 5.5. .5. Now you could use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the last side. Or I'm just going to use a trig ratio to figure out the last side. This time I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of 25 degrees is equal to adjacent, which is hj, over the hypotenuse, which is 13. All right, multiply by 13 on both sides. Hj is equal to 11.8. Done. All right, and then we just need to figure out the missing angle measurement. So I have measurement of angle G plus 25 plus 90 is equal to 180. Measurement angle G plus 115 is equal to 180. Subtract 115. Measurement of angle G is equal to 65 degrees. Done. We have solved the triangle. All right. If you do not have a clear understanding of the difference between regular trig ratios and inverse trig ratios, please make sure to ask me for help so I could clarify that difference. If you get everything, go ahead and begin your assignment.